Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Wendy Day. I have a friend with me and we're going to talk about radio because you guys call me with so many questions about radio. This is Mike Matthews. Mike Matthews, how are you today? Doing great, Wendy. Thanks for having me. Uh, I hope today we'll be able to give your, your viewers a lot more uh, information about radio, how it works how they too can get radio and get a fair shot at it um, and uh, and so forth. Good. Well, Mike, would you start by introducing yourself? Like, where are you from? How did you get involved in the music industry? Will you show us your ponytail? Ponytail power. (laughs) Yeah, here it is. That's kind of like the big thing. Um, I think I've been synonymous for those that know me. Everybody says, hey, they don't remember the name. They remember the ponytail. So they say, hey, go look for the guy with the ponytail. He can get your record played. Um, my name is Mike Matthews. For those that don't know who I am, uh, our company is RadioAirplayPros.com or Radio Airplay Professionals. Uh, RadioAirplayPros.com. Uh, actually, we kind of have been doing radio marketing. I've been in the game for 27 years. Uh, I've started working with companies like Rap a Lot uh, in the early, early days. Um, you know, when they barely were just in a house and nobody really knew who they were. Um, did a lot of PR work uh, back in the day from Priority Records, Def Jam, a lot of the earlier companies when they were first getting started. So I was able to get some some good introductions into the business, meeting a lot of great people like Ice Cube and Public Enemy and the Ghetto Boys and, and things. So it was a fantastic ride. Um, little did I know it was going to turn into more of the promotion end, getting in, starting from publicity and doing on-tour PR for a lot of different people, uh, learning a lot more about the business, doing artist management for a while, and then little did I know I was going to wind up doing radio promotion and became very successful at it. We actually specialize at Radio Airplay Pros in developing new and developing artists. Uh, we've helped launch a lot of careers, a lot of the the records that you've heard on the radio, you might not have known who was behind it. Um, we helped launch So Icy for Gucci Man. Um, we did the Stanky Leg for G-Spot Boys. Um, we did the uh, the Charlie Boy, I Look Good. I mean, the list kind of goes drink, on and on. Over the years. Exactly. The I Smoke, I Drank for Roy Jones. Um, the list kind of goes on and on. We did the Laffy Taffy, d for uh, uh, I mean, it's just been so crazy. Yeah, over the years, the you know, to, to literally take uh, an artist that no one's ever heard of in life uh, and help launch the careers and, and see them go on to, to superstardom. Uh, I remember in the early, early days when I was out on the road and, and with an artist that had a, a band talking about like things like toothaches and all kinds of weird things. And little did I know, I mean, we weren't even performing in front of, I'm not exaggerating when I say 10 people. And little did I know she was going to become a superstar. That was Gwen Stefani, who's now in The Voice and and performing in front of stadiums and things. And like I said, again, nobody knew uh, the potential of stardom that she was going to have at a a very, very young age. So uh, and here was a band like coming out of Orange County and just going around doing little club gigs and, and just trying to get on like everybody else. Yeah, so no it's it's no amazing doubt. to see what can happen. So I say all that to say, uh, you guys that are tuning in, you could be next. And we say it all the time. Me and Wendy talk, we say, hey, you know what? We don't know who the next Eminem is going to be, the next Dr. Dre, the next, you know, Tupac, whoever it may be, but we're looking for you. And uh, the reality is, is everyone has time for a hit record. Uh, and, you know, we work hundreds of records here. Uh, annually and our focus is we don't know we don't know where that next one's going to come from so our anticipation is we we give you an honest day's work for an honest day's dollar we want to make sure that uh, your record gets a shot because we know a lot of this business is very political Uh, and so through that we want to make sure that if the record gets a shot that it has some legs if we got us one we got us one if we don't we want to build a strong enough foundation to where we can grab the next one and keep building so, Mike, what should somebody do before they come to you? Or should they come to you, like, right out of the studio with their record? Well, we have clients that have done both. That's an excellent question. A lot of what we prefer is that there's some foundational work done. I mean, obviously, in today's market, you want to make sure you have a social media presence. You want to make sure a key thing is that your music is up for sale or it's up at streaming outlets. Now we have to talk. We can't just say like the good old days, make sure your song is through distribution and it's in the stores. 
Uh, the reality is, is you don't want to start attacking radio and no one can find your record anywhere. Uh, and that's really the key because if you're starting to reach the masses, which radio is just that, it's mass media. A lot of people don't associate radio is just like television. It's on that side of the fence. It's reaching the masses. It has nothing to do with street promotion and all the various other aspects is that you want to make sure that your ducks are in a row, as we call it. Because what radio programmers are going to do is is they're not just going to be playing records that they can't research, that they can't find anywhere. Is anyone talking about it on social media? Is it shazamming? Is, is, it, is it doing any kind of research? Is it sound scanning? Is there any kind of product movement whatsoever? And what a lot of people overlook, when everybody talks about research, what they really don't understand is the core of research of what programmers do. It's beyond just playing a record. It's making sure that your music is impacting their market. Because if, if they're playing a song and nobody's streaming it, say in Atlanta, they're playing a song and nobody's streaming it in Atlanta, nobody's downloading it in Atlanta, nobody's talking about it in Atlanta, but you're telling everybody you have all the strip clubs on lock, you have all the clubs playing it, the streets are on fire, but nothing is going on in that metro market. Obviously, sure, they're going to look at what's happening in Houston and Miami and Charlotte and all these other areas. And, and they're looking at what they're looking for is trends in terms of records that are growing that they may want to start looking at and seeing if it's going to, hey, it's working for this market. It might work for mine as well. But the reality is you want to make sure your I's are dotted and T's across within the backyard of that particular market, whether you reside there or not. Those are the key things to do first before approaching radio. Because once you approach radio, and whether you hire companies like Radio Airplay Pros or others, is that you want to make sure there's some kind of story there. The stronger the story, the greater the chance is what we call it's it's in our world we say it's easy to get a record played, but it's harder to keep it played. Right. And so that's what you want to make sure of is that it's not just about getting it played, it's about that continual rotation. That's why it's not called we play records, it's called programming. It's that's for a program to record. It's programming radio. And what it's about is programming the listener's ear to be able to say, hey, you know what? This is a sound that I'm in tune with. And as you keep hearing it more and more and more, that's why we used to hear back in the day where I won't mention any names, but people will say, you know what? I'm not the greatest rapper. I'm the greatest hustler. And we used to hear a lot of things like that because people understood it was a business. It wasn't necessarily all about having this great, great talent. What it was about was understanding how the elements of the business work. And if you can understand that along with having great talent, you could be the next superstar. So if I live so someplace, I, um, the radio station doesn't owe me any radio play. It's not exactly, and that's, and that's a big misconception. A lot of people think that radio, they're in business to break your music, to make you a star, <laughs> to to make you all this money and so forth. Radio is in business to sell advertising. It's about it's about literally keeping people tuned in on that dial making sure that they know that, you know what, this station is playing great music. And, and, and in, in, in between that great music, there's that advertising, there's the support that those stations are getting that say, hey, we have X amount of listeners that are guaranteed to hear your ad, and they are not tuning the dial because we play what they want to hear. That's why a lot of people get upset at radio and they say, why do they only play the same 12, 15 songs all day? And that's because the masses are dictating and saying, this is what we want to hear. Right. And mm -hmm. until people get in there and change that, people say, well, I can rap better. Uh, my production's better. I've, I've heard it all. I'm sure you have too, Wendy. Yes, have. It's, and we tell them all the time, it's not about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the time, and I remember even back in the day when there was video promotion was real big with like BET and stuff, people always say, why are they playing this video and that video? And I always go back to the research and I used to always tell them, look at the amount of viewership and all the smaller video shows, the impacts they're having on the market with this video. So a lot of times artists tend to question radio instead of saying, you know what, they know what they're doing. You would think a lot of these stations have been around longer than we have. Right. They know what they're doing. They know what their listeners want to hear or else they would be out of business. Right. So what we need to do is do the reverse. We tell a lot of our clients is, you know, you want to be unique. You want to be in your own lane, but you also have to be what we call marketable. You right. can't be too far right. left. If radio is playing Drake and Nicki Minaj and Lil Wayne and Chris Browns or whoever, you don't have to sound like them, but you have to be marketable just like they are. So that way, when your song is played, because we tell people all the time, oh, I want my song played at 12 noon. 
And you know what we say? We say, can your record be heard between what they're already playing? Because if you don't start making music that is commercial enough, that is satisfactory enough, because they're not going to take Drake off and put your record on. That's obvious. Mm -hmm. So why not come up with a radio song that's complimentary, that's marketable to whether it be that same audience, but also a similar sound and feel to where that programmer, that mixer, that DJ says, you know what, I don't have a problem putting this in my mix because you're not so far left where they say, you know, it's like a DJ in a club where as soon as they put your record on, the floor is clear. Right. Nobody right. wants to do that and experience that. And radio is no different. Radio just pays a lot more attention to it. Right. So if you right. focus on as you build your brand in a market and making sure that there's enough research to justify radio playing it, I guarantee you they will play it. And there's different formats. Like your music has to fit within whatever format you're going after. You can't go to um, urban radio with a song that sounds more country, for example, like a country rap. That's right. And that's what a lot of people misconstrue. That's why we always say, do your research. Right. Do your research in terms of understanding. Like I said, it's not to change anyone's sound. It's making sure that you understand your niche. Exactly. Uh, in the early days, working artists like Scarface and the Ghetto Boys or, uh, you, you know, one of the things that I learned at a young age was that your hometown might not necessarily be where your record's going to break out at. People didn't understand that the Ghetto Boys had a lot of traction in Hawaii. They were huge in Chicago. There was a lot of other areas that was receptive to that music, and it wasn't necessarily their backyard. And we found that there's been so much conversation in the industry over the years. Is everybody saying, hey, you got to get your backyard, you got to get your backyard. Well, what we've always said is it only takes one market to break a record, big or small. It can always be replicated. And it may or may not be your backyard. A lot of people want to focus on it, obviously, because of what? The expense of it. Working your backyard, you have friends, family, you can move around, so forth, and you can constantly beat the market up. But what if that backyard is not the viable market? So that's why we bring that up is we say, do your due diligence, do your homework. Make sure that when you start to map out your marketing plan that you understand. Don't just say, okay, you know what? I want Atlanta because that's just a hot market. Or I want Houston because it's a melting pot for talent and nobody's really breaking out of there right now. Whatever it may be, make sure that it's the right fit for what you're doing. Right. And nine mm -hmm. times out of ten, you're going to find that the audience, the market there, the industry there in terms of radio, retail, whatever it may be, are going to be more receptive to your sound and what you're doing versus we tell people all the time. We've seen clients, they'll spend a million dollars trying to make Miami love them just because it's what they feel, I want to go break my record there. And it's like, why? When you've got a hundred other markets that will embrace you with shows, with interviews, with additional support in all kinds of ways on a fraction of the dollar. Right. So a lot of it is we tell our clients, look, you know, put the ego down, you know, get turn the TV off, as they say, and get into reality of the nuts and bolts of this industry of what it's going to take to be successful. Is it, is it smarter to start maybe then in smaller markets? Like instead of coming at an Atlanta directly, would it make sense to hit Columbus, Augusta, Macon, Greenville? Like I'm, I'm kind of going around the city in terms of marketplaces. It's a great example. I'll use one of our more, what we call more recent successes. Uh, when we did the cash out, cashing out record. Um, a lot of people didn't understand the strategy and approach that. They thought, okay, he's from Atlanta area. He's just going to blow up. And he, the reason why he became so successful was because Atlanta got on his back. And, and all these wonderful things, Atlanta radio was playing it. And, and you know, DJ Spins produced it. And, and, you know, he was, you know, had a lot of DJ friends at the stations. And No, it had nothing to do with that because people that really worked that record, like us, know the truth. That record was broken, Macon, Georgia. And that's why I brought that up. And, and people didn't really understand that. Macon, Georgia embraced uh, Cash Out as a new and developing artist, as a teenager. He didn't even have a mixtape out. He didn't have an album out. Nobody knew where this kid even came I, from. I have no idea like, where he came from. Yeah, exactly. It was just like, man, is he a one-hit wonder? Came out of nowhere with this record that kids just gravitated to. But what was very interesting about it and again, and working that record at radio and understanding how radio works, where it was only getting on average 10 to 15 spins a week in Atlanta, 
it was getting a hundred spins a week in Macon, Georgia. And it was the number one record in Macon, Georgia for several weeks. And a lot of people didn't even know it because they were thinking, oh, he's from Atlanta. This is why everybody's on it. No, they were very smart in their strategy. They worked the streets from the ground up to radio and radio back down to the streets. They took on all of the markets from Columbus, Macon, Savannah, Augusta, all of the surrounding territories that surrounded Atlanta to where they were able to infiltrate Atlanta and really make it grab hold. So by the time that record really started taking on in Atlanta, the groundswell, they they couldn't stop it. It was like a freight train. But what was so interesting about the record was that it started growing all throughout the South, all the way to Texas. Yes. So you had yes. Houston and Dallas starting to bubble with this kid from Atlanta that nobody ever heard of. And so when you take a mass area like that and you literally clobber the hell out of it, and that's literally what we did. We had every single market from shows to, to street promotion to radio from across the South lit up like a Christmas tree. And our whole strategy was to be very, very aggressive with it. It was the the label CEO was like, his mentality was like, we're going to go get this. I believe in this. We're going to force feed it on people, even though this is a kid nobody's ever heard of. And it's again, it's not a strategy everybody can do, but the bottom line is it worked. What started to happen, and this is what was very interesting about that particular record. We started seeing it break out in the, in the tween market. The kids started gravitating to it on social media. It started creating more of a buzz at the junior high, high school level. And when you start reaching those trends, those kids, those are the ones that are actually buying music. At that time, this was a few years ago, streaming was around, but it wasn't as big as it is now. There were still actually downloads of MP3. So it was the iTunes thing. It was the Amazon thing where people were paying 99 cents for a download. But what people started seeing and this is something I can attest to what was very interesting is we started seeing real sales. So it wasn't just about radio. It wasn't just about the street hype and shows. The kid went from doing no features to everybody wanted him on a record and, and shows and all these things. But what was interesting about it was those kids started buying it. And that was something that the major record labels paid close attention to. Yes. It wasn't just hype in the streets. It's wait a minute. There's five to 10,000 downloads every week happening here on this kid we never heard of. So the record was actually doing, I believe it was close to 200,000 real downloads before deals even came along. Right. We were on our way to gold. And, and that's what was so unique about it that yes, it went gold as the deal was consummated. But the reality is, is that even if we didn't, the record probably would have went gold anyway, because it wasn't just that, one hit wonder syndrome or what we call a turntable hit. People don't understand the difference between a turntable hit and a hit record. A hit record is what people buy, what people believe in and they're willing to invest their money in. A turntable hit is that record that's played in the clubs and the streets that you just want to hear, but you're not necessarily going to support. And and so that's why the, the in the industry we say everyone has time for a hit record. Yes. And a lot mm-hmm. of people get it confused and they say, oh, man, everybody in my squad, everybody in my hood is jumping to this record. That doesn't mean you have a hit record. A mm-hmm. hit record is what the industry is willing to embrace, invest in. Right. Now you mm-hmm. have a legitimate hit record. So that's what we're looking for here at Ready Rare Play Pros. If you got that next hit, <laughs> make sure you bring it to us. We'd love to be a part of it. <laughs> I love it. So when somebody comes to you and hires you, do you work, do you work alone? Like how, how, how does the process work to break a record? Is it about relationships in the marketplace? When you make great questions, funny, we were just speaking about that this morning. Um, I don't care what name you drop. There's no one of us that have been responsible 100% for anyone's success. No matter big or small, it's a team effort. We have a big team here, Ready Wear Play Pros, Dominion Marketing. We have affiliates over 200 people in our network all over the country. When it comes to radio, we've actually took the business model as we all used to work for major labels. We took that same business model. They have reps all over the country, people that handle various regions, various radio stations and so forth it's it's a conglomerate of us so it's not just me i'm just one of many in this company that uh work records and things there's no possible way i always tell people if one guy tells you he can get your record on 50 60 stations by itself he's lying straight up there's no one of us that have that many stations 
personally. What it's about, it's about a team. It's about multiple people. And what we do at Dominion Marketing, we build a strategy, a plan with you of attack. We know who the players are. It is about what you said, When It's about relationships. We understand. We've been doing this long enough to know what, what individual strengths are. It's just like back in the day with street teams. Just because you can pass out flyers don't mean you're a street promoter and you, and you can start your own street team, even though there's many that have done that. You know, there's a difference between what we always say marketing and promotion. Promotion is free. That's passing out the flyers at the clubs and CDs and so forth. That's promotion. Marketing is selling things that you do that affect the bottom line. And I think I've probably been one of the only people in the industry that really talked about the differences. That's why our company is called Dominion Marketing, not Dominion Promotion, because the things that we do affect our clients' bottom line. It makes a difference in their overall career. Obviously, passing out flyers and things, promotional efforts is great, and it's all a part of it. But there's no way we've never, ever seen anyone become successful in this industry on promotion efforts alone without any marketing. Right. So it's a team effort. When it, no matter what aspect you're looking at, whether it's radio, whether it's street promotion, even, even now, which street promotion has now migrated to what's called social media or internet marketing now, it, it, the presence has changed, but it's still a team effort. There is no one company out here that's dominating, as they say, the social media world. And they're the, the go-to company that everybody's got to use to in order to market your record online effectively. That's even become very, very competitive. Well, there's hundreds of companies out here. Everybody's, everybody's scratching their head. But what we always say is make sure you understand what people's strengths are. Then only then they can be an asset to your company where you'll know exactly how effective they're going to be able to be for you. Because just because they've worked this record, that record, doesn't mean they're going to be able to do the same thing for your record. Right. And I think that's yeah. one of the biggest misconstrued things in this industry um, is we've had a lot of people call us and they say, hey, we want what you did with the cashing out record or what you did with the I smoke I drank or, or what you did with the Laffy Taffy or this record or that record. And I said, you know what? First of all, we have to know where you're at because every client, they're working with different budgets. Every client has a different team. Every client has a different record. Everybody's using different producers, different strategies and so forth. So it's impossible to give someone the same exact results even if they spend the same exact amount of money. And I know you've witnessed this even with your clients, Wendy, is so many times independent labels will get caught up in that. They'll say, well, hey, they spent 20 grand on radio and the record blew up. So all I got to do is spend 20 grand on radio and my record's going to blow up. What I always remind people of is you have to look at the whole picture. You can't just look at one slice of the pie. What do they say when you order a pizza? Who wants to pay for a, a pizza guy delivers them one slice, right? You know, what's the, where's the rest of my pizza at? It's, it's you got to get the whole pie, including the toppings. So that's where a lot of independent labels go wrong is they think if they just got one or two slices, they're going to go to the moon right. instead mm -hmm. of looking at the entire pie and be ultimately successful. So that's kind of our angle as we also consult with our clients, not just do radio services. We always want to make sure our clients understand that. Just because you're hiring us to do radio promotion and we secure airplay, that's only one part of it. Remember, like I said, the key is not to get the airplay. I'll get you the airplay. The key is to keep the airplay, right. and that's mm -hmm. not on us. We take care of all what's called positioning of records. Our job is to get that song started at radio. All records do what? They start in light rotation. There's no record that comes out here. Even major artists don't just come out here and get added to heavy rotation or power rotation out the gate. You've got to start somewhere. Right. But the reality yeah. is, is that when that programmer says, you know what, I'm going to give you a shot, even if it's at 2 in the morning that that record is getting played, it still has to research at 2 in the morning. There still has to be justification of moving that rotation from overnights to day parts. Right. And then right. even when they move it from overnights to day parts, is there justification to keep it in day parts? Is there justification to increase the spins? And that's the value of radio that people have to understand. It's more than just, hey, you know what? I'm going to hire a good radio promoter. I'm going to get some airplay. Our question is, once you get the airplay, what are you going to do with it? Right. Right. So you mentioned budgets. What, what kind of budget is realistic for a rap record? It's a, it, it, that's a, that's an excellent and does, question. Does time of year matter? <laughs> uh, I'll just keep lobbing them at you and just keep hitting them back. <laughs> I, I'm going to, I'm going to address both of them. The, the reality is, is that 
and, and we've been doing radio marketing for, like I said, 27 years. I'll be honest. I've never seen a record broke with $10,000 or less at radio. I've never. Yeah, if somebody's done it, I'm not going to say it's impossible. I'm not going to say on camera that it's never been done. We have not witnessed it. I have not now, witnessed it either. Um, but what we have <laughs> witnessed <I> is, <laughs> exactly, what I said earlier, yeah, if only that was the case, we'd all be we all be rich, right, Wendy? We'd have tons of successes under our belt. The reality is, is that, um, like I said earlier, it only takes one station to break a record. But it doesn't mean that if you get one station playing your record, you're out of here. Right. No, it takes that one station to stand up and represent that record and say, hey, you know what? This record is working for me. I believe in that record. That's the key. And I'm going to stand up on it. working for them. That's the key right there. Exactly. And if the record is working for them, then I've seen it happen time and time again. Every successful record we've been a part of, programmers will pick up the phone. They're on weekly conference calls with sister stations, and especially if they're part of major networks, and they talk about records. Hey, this is working for me. And all of a sudden, now you've got a station, uh, you know, states over start playing. You don't even know how they got the record. A lot of things happen behind the scenes in this business, or what we call spread the record. There's also what we call triangular markets. A lot of people don't understand because people rarely talk about it. What's that? But there's certain... There's certain what we call trigger markets in radio, especially in commercial FM radio. There's certain markets and certain stations of what we call impact others. In other words, that if this station is playing it, if this station is standing up on it, if it's working on this station, there's other stations that may not be a part of their network or their uh, affiliation in terms of like if they're a clear channel or radio one station and so forth, what they'll do is they'll, they'll mirror their playlist. They'll say, Hey, oh. if this new, if this new Gucci man or this new future record is working for X, Y, Z station, well, Hey, you know what? It's working for them. Our market's very similar. We're going to give the record a shot like, and, and, and we like would probably work for us. In Dallas, for example, Pot potentially, yeah. potentially, exactly. So there's a lot of these trigger markets. We call them in the radio game. That if your record's positioned properly, if your record's working in those markets, we automatically know it's going to lead to other markets. But you, oh, it's yeah. got to make sense. And trust me, even though I'm saying it publicly right now, if you know some trigger markets, you don't think it's very easy to get airplay on them because of what I just said. Right. They understand. These guys aren't crazy. They know that if they get on a record, they know it's going to trigger other markets and other things may take place. So you have to be very, very careful. I want to also address the second part of the question you asked about seasons. One of the things that was very, very interesting about the cashing out record we worked was that we started December 15th. We started right before Christmas. I would have been terrified I, I, to do that, Mike. It, I would exactly. Have never and listen done to what that. you just said, Wendy. Most people, most people say it's the fourth quarter. And at the time, there was the usual fourth quarter blitz. There was all the major labels dropping stuff. But we took a different approach to it. One of the things that we got to understanding at radio was we said, we're going to do the opposite of what everybody else is doing. So while everyone else was running the other direction, we looked at it as a window of opportunity. Right. So we got together with the label and all the affiliate other marketing guys and everybody that was involved with the Cash Now project. And we said, look, now is the best time. Let's not wait until the spring when everybody's coming back and after the holidays and all those things. Let's go ahead and set the record up. And that's what we did. We spent the, all of Christmas. We worked through the holidays into the new year of just setting the record up. While everybody else was on vacation, doing the holiday thing, we were working in the trenches. And we really believe that that's why that record had that much more success because by February, we had a bidding war going on with major labels like Capital and Def Jam. Everybody wanted to sign this kid like, right. who is this? And the reason why that happened was, was when it, it was nobody else doing anything. Right. There was Stood people out. actually... They were now getting started come February, March of trying to get their releases set up and now trying to go at radio. We had two to 300 spins a week by February 1. So we were already the number one independent record in the country at that time. So we were a major standout and we were going north. There was nothing going south about it. The spins were continuing to build and increase every week. So it was a whole different strategy before they settled, you know, on the deal with everybody knows what L.A. Reid and Epic Records and so forth in March. And then they came on board and, you know, the rest was history. The song went platinum. So, you know, that's why people always wonder. It's like um, I'm so proud of my gold more than so much the platinum of it because I was we were an intricate part of seeing that song reach to that exactly. success.
Hey, Epic and their staff and their team, they did an excellent job bringing it home and taking it Platinum Plus. But for us, the more the gratitude was seeing a kid from a hood that nobody ever heard of, never even had a mixtape out, see his dream through, get a shot and turn his entire life around, his family and so forth, uh, all because he had believers. And that's kind of one of the things that we do need to address in this call, Wendy, is that, yeah, we've been talking about budgets, we've been talking about radio, we've been talking about all these things. But the key in this industry is to find a team of believers. Find people you can surround yourself. If you're an up-and-coming artist or you're a label or, uh, you know, you're, you're trying to build your team, you know, it's more than just so much, okay, I got to get investors. Sure, money is just a tool. You have to be able to have resources to build. But I, we've seen, and you've seen too, Winnie, there's guys out here with millions of dollars, all the money in the world, and we call it, we say can't get arrested in this business right. because yeah. they have a ton of money but they don't have the right team. They don't have the right know-how behind them exactly. to be able to know what to do with the money. So a lot of them, they fail. They do a bunch of what we call wonderful things in this business. And the more these wonderful things you do because what we call watch TV. That's what I say. They're watching TV all the time. They say, oh, okay, this person did this, this person did that. So if I go spend a half a million dollars doing the same thing, I'm going to get the same results. This is what I, my answer to that is. And I'm probably the only one in this music industry that has said this. I, I symbolize it to when we were all kids, we had, those, remember those coloring books, how they had to connect the dots and used to have to draw the line and connect the dots in order to create pictures. Well, the music industry is no different. It's connect the dots. But think about what I'm about to tell you. If each dot represents street promotion, internet marketing, social media, radio, television, publicity, uh, uh, studio and creative aspect, all of those are different dots that you need them all. But what happens, the biggest mistake a lot of independent labels do is they just start drawing lines because they say, oh, I'm doing this. I'm wrapping trucks. I'm putting posters in every telephone pole. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But what winds up happening is the picture does not come out. There's only one thing you can do to make the picture come out, and that's to follow the process. It has to go in a certain order. So it's not just about doing all these wonderful things. It's one, two, three, four. And if you do them in that order, you're going to get the picture, the end result of what you want to, to achieve. And I think when even like with your clients, why a lot of them want to retain Windy Day and company, because not just so much because your track record of success, but it's because you mastered the art of the process. Right. And right. I think that if people watching this really understand what this video is really about to the core, is that you're retaining client, you're retaining people like us to be able to say, you know what? It's not that you can't do the same thing without us. It's that we understand the process and we're going to make sure that you're not just drawing lines all over the place, that you're going to be able to create the picture exactly that you want to create at the end of the day to get even closer to your goal, even if it's at the worst case scenario. None of us have a crystal ball, Wendy. We say, you know what, we can't promise people they're going to be the next Lil Wayne or the next Chris Brown or the next Drake or whatever. But what we can promise people is that, you know what, if you, if, you, if you respect the process and you're willing to go through it, what we can guarantee is that a Windy Day, a Mike Matthews, will put them steps closer. Right. If we right. don't get them there, we guarantee that we can get our clients a whole lot of steps closer if they respect the process. That is your worst case scenario with us. Right. You know, worst case. So, you know, that's a lot of what it's about. It's about making sure, especially when it comes to radio, that you're respecting the process and not just, hey, give me an Atlanta, give me a New York, give me an LA. Everybody wants that, including all the major artists. Right. What it's about is respecting the process, whether it be starting in a small market, if that's all you can get, and grow your record, build, find out where your market is, where your niche is, and expand it from there. Can I can I do it myself? <laughs> like, not me, but as an if an artist wants to do this themselves, can they go up to their local radio station in Valdosta, Georgia, and start getting radio play? Sure. Um, you know, we call it... And I think in 2017, it's been, you're hearing the term more and more, the DIY thing. Um, it's becoming more and more popular. And I think, I think, it's, I think what did it is this right here, the, the mouse button. I think the whole internet and technology, everybody's clicking the mouse. I mean, even while we're talking right now, there's probably people 
researching and, you know, looking up, you know, if we're mentioning any particular names of, of this or that particular company. And, and that's great. That's what people do now. It's not like 20 years ago um, when we didn't have the technology we have now. Everyone had to seek. I mean, that's when business was good, right? I mean, they needed us as service providers. Now we have to battle as service providers against the mouse, against people who are saying, you know what? I can do this myself. I don't need a Wendy Day. I don't need a Mike Matthews. Um, you know, and, and the issue that we have with that, and I'll just say publicly, um, is that you will always need a Windy Day. You will always need a Mike Matthews. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because this industry is built on relationships. There's no mouse. There's no internet. There's no nothing that can take away from the human interaction of relationships that will help. That's really what's going to take your career to the next level. It's not mm -hmm. that you clicked a few mouse buttons and you posted a few pictures on Instagram and now you're a superstar. Sure, there's been people that have obtained notoriety from doing things like that. But the reality is, is that now you're discovered. The reality is, is that you're going to need the human interaction. You're going to need the service providers to help. And that's just what we always talked about. It's not about getting the airplay. It's about keeping it. Right. And you know what keeps you know what keeps airplay? Research. And what controls research? People, not the internet. So, and that's what people don't understand. So people will think, and, and we'll talk about it. The number one thing in radio that, that everybody knows the research is done by is Shazam right now. So a lot of these programmers are looking at, well, how is the record Shazam in Atlanta? And you're like, well, what's that? I don't even know how to get my record registered with Shazam. It's not even listed if I go on there. That, how many record Shazam? number nine on Shazam right now in Atlanta. <laughs> that's incredible. And and so and, and that's a good example, Wendy. And what that program director in Atlanta is doing is they're looking at that, and, and they may never even have heard of that artist. They just added but what the record. That's, and there you go. And what that's telling them is like, wait a minute. Our listeners is Shazamming it. And reason why I bring up Shazam is people think it's just a technology thing. Oh, that's on the internet. I can just go click my mouse button and give me 500,000 Shazams and I'm going to be number one in Atlanta. And like you said, they're going to add my record and play it. Well, good luck with trying to make that happen. One of the interesting things about Shazam and how it became so strong as, a, as an avenue of research is because as of right now, Shazam cannot be manipulated. So it's not like YouTube. You can go get a million views and nobody cares. You got a million Shazams, the world is paying attention, trust me. And I'm going to tell you why, in case those that aren't familiar with Shazam don't understand what it is. What it is, is kind of like the whole like thing and thumbs up thing and all of that with all the social media. But the difference is that you can only Shazam once per device. So you only got one cell phone. If you got 100,000 cell phones, you're a bad person. You know, they'll say, hey, you can have it then. You can have your 100,000 Shazams. But you can only Shazam from one device, a cell phone, a tablet, a computer at a time. So you can't sit there and just shazam your record all day long thinking, oh, man, I'm going to be the biggest thing researching in a city like Atlanta. They know better. They know that you're going to get everybody and their mama to do that all day long. So that's why a lot of programmers utilize things like shazam that currently cannot be manipulated. That if you got 10,000 shazam, I'm going to put the number out there. If you got 10,000 shazams, you're moving a little bit. You've got some, some things going on. Because think about what I'm about to tell you. The, the person hearing your song on the radio has to take their phone out, literally take the time to push on that Shazam app and Shazam your song right. while that song mm -hmm. is being played or go on their computer and do it or go that on their tablet like and do it. it. That means you really like it. I mean, just think about that. You're not sitting there doing that all day long while you're driving. Listening. There's some work involved in that. Again, it's like I said, human interaction. So technology is what it is. But we got to have it. Right. So don't think right. if you can X out all the people that you're going to be this superstar. If you can X out all the service providers that all these wonderful things are going to be able to happen for you because you're an Internet sensation. It doesn't work that way. So right. Internet and when we say I love it, you know, at the same time, it's it's a stepping stone. It's what we call a way to be discovered. But it's not the end all game. So, Wendy, we're, we're still relevant. We're still here. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> so, Mike, um, a lot of my viewers are very new to the music industry. Could you explain what those lovely things are on the wall behind your head? <laughs> well, um, I'm sorry to embarrass you. It, it's okay. You know, but they're we don't, very we don't new like talk. and they don't know. Yeah, we don't talk about it a lot. Um, you know, as you can see behind us, you know, we, we get a lot of plaques. These are these are platinum certifications. Uh you know, we have the Adele 10 million, the Justin Bieber quadruple platinum, the uh, Ed Sheeran triple platinum on the single shape of you. 
these are things that labels give out to service providers and things to people within the industry to show a show of appreciation of you know working records and and helping build careers and at the end of the day help people make money um you know we've been blessed here at dominion marketing and our affiliates we have over 250 gold and platinum plaques that we're proud of uh we've gotten everybody from you know the the death rows to the no limits to, to everybody that um that we've been a part of in one facet or another whether we're working them at retail marketing or whether we're dealing with radio marketing and again we're one of many people that are involved with all these projects. There is no one successful project that one or two or three people do. There's hundreds of people. In order to get this these platinum plaques, there's hundreds of people involved in order to make these types of things happen. Records just don't sell millions of copies on one or two guys running around saying, hey, I broke that record. Right. Um, mm -hmm. What we've done here at Radio Air Play Pros, we what we call we're an incubator. We love what we do. I'm so proud of like a Gucci man, somebody that, when he came to us, we had nobody ever heard of him. We picked this record called I So Icy, and, and nobody even knew who this kid was. And it's just a blessing to see a career just flourish right. from right. our initial efforts. Or when we took a record like 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 the G-Spot Boys, a Stanky Leg, I was like, man, is anybody going to feel this record? Is anything going to happen with this record? And at the time, our site was called LookingForAirplay.com, and we were one of the first to do d digital delivery of music when things were transitioning from CDs to MP3s. And we took that song and we serviced it out to DJs all over the country. And everybody, what is this? What is this? And we were the first to introduce that song out. And that's what it is for us. That's where our gratification comes in. It's being able to take those nobodies and turn them into somebody. Exactly. It's helping those independent labels that maybe probably would have never gotten a major label deal but were able to achieve if that's what their goal was right. they were able to achieve a deal or they were able to sell records or just make a living from what it is that they love to do their craft exactly. and so right. that's you know that's a lot of what we do all of these accolades and things are great i mean you know you probably can't see the other wall it's full of billboard plaques from you know we've had almost 200 number one records in billboard um and again that's mm -hmm. years of hard work you know that's tons and tons of relationships it's not just us it's tons i mean at one point when there wasn't all these downloads and streams there was the good brick and mortar retail store at one point, we had over 200 independent retail stores across the country, relationships that we built from the ground up and helping stores and helping keep their doors open and making sure they knew what all the hot music was that was moving in their market. I mean, these are things that you can never take away with technology and things, although technology has taken away a lot of those stores. But the reality is, if it wasn't for those brick and mortar stores, a lot of these artists that we buy into today would not even have a career. Right. There would be no right. cash money. There would been there wouldn't have been no no limit. There wouldn't have been no young Jeezys. There wouldn't have been none of these guys if it wasn't for that. So right. we always tell clients, even nowadays in the millennials and this generation, everybody's hey, it's all about the internet. It's all about the streaming. We say that's great, but don't forget the people. Right. In the midst of all of that. It's still about the people. We say it's about the, the eyeballs, right? The eyeballs and the, the ears. ears. <laughs> you gotta have them. Yes. You gotta have them, Wendy. Mike, what was your first plaque? Um, well, my very first platinum plaque is actually, you probably can't see it, but it's it's also behind me. Um, it's the Ghetto Boys Mind Playing Tricks on Me. It's probably my most sentimental. Um, like I said, now, you know, we get them all the time and it's and that's great. But you but, never forget you know, the first. What, Exactly. What do we always say when, you know, what we say now is, hey, I can't eat that. So, hey, exactly. send me a check. Right. You know, but the reality is, is that, um, you know, that 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 ghetto boys mind playing tricks on me. I mean, it, it, it changed my life. I have to honestly say I give a lot of credit to rap a lot. People don't understand how many doors that a company like that really opened. There wouldn't be a lot of companies wouldn't even exist. To this day, wouldn't even, they wouldn't even have the bravery to even step out in this industry if it wasn't for pioneering companies like rap -A -Lot. And I learned so much because I was I was only 17 years old at the time, Wendy. Wow. Um, and I was very young in the business. But one of the things that I would honestly say, Cliff Budget, Tamara Wall, uh, you know, Lil J, obviously. Er, I mean, everybody uh, um, that was involved with rap -A -Lot, they, they embraced me. Uh, here I was a kid in high school. Um, trying to get my feet wet more in the industry 
Um, you know, Rapalot was still working out of a house. Then they moved into a little little office in the bank building, and uh, and was still growing. But they were local. They were here. There was something I had it was accessible to, and um, I had a magazine that at the time it was called Concert Circuit. It was a fanzine that I had in the streets of Houston and was circulating throughout a lot of the schools and things. And I remember they they gave me they gave me my first shot. You know, they said, hey, you know what? They had an artist called Prince Johnny C and Choice and and the Baby Ghetto Boys, you know, all of these different artists that they were developing at the time. Uh, Convict you know, three, two, and all, I mean, all these, you know, different, different guys from way back in the day, people probably don't even know who I'm talking about. <laughs> but anyway, this was before the, the success of the ghetto boys and, and, and Scarface. But um, it was, it was very interesting because they took a liking to me and they say, Hey, you know what? We're going to let you sit down with our artists. We're going to let you interview them. We're going to let you help develop them, nice. you know, mm -hmm. and we like what you're doing here in the city. And, and again, we're talking way back then. rap -Lot's not the rap -Lot you know now. rap -Lot was a was an up-and-coming label that nobody really knew, just like, just like a lot of these labels are now. And they were working the streets of Houston trying to get on like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I am extremely grateful to them that they opened a lot of doors um, through them. They had a relationship with Priority Records. Um, you know, I was able to, to, you know, get into that line in a relationship with Def Jam. I was able to get into that line. So a lot of things stem from that. And, and that's why I think, Wendy, a lot of people do is they forget where they came from right. and right. in this business. And you can't. Um, you know, I'm honored to be in a relationship with, with you and what we've created in our business relationship. Uh, you know, I remember meeting you 20 years ago, wow. you know, and mm -hmm. things and seeing you at different music conferences and speaking on different panels and stuff like that. And little did I know that we would develop into the relationship that we have now and the level of business that we do together and stuff. And that's why I always stress the importance of relationships, the value, especially with people like us. We need to do this full time. What do we always say? What are we going to do? Push grocery carts? You know, I mean, this is all our life. This is all we know to do. So we have to, yeah, we have to make this work. And so I think a big part of it is to humble yourself is to understand that you can't forget where you come from. You can't forget, you know, and, and, and me and you joke about it all the time when there's a lot of artists that we've helped that we, we can't even get on the phone anymore. You know, I mean, as they say, you know, it's what it is. And, you know, some guys, you know, you help, they get to what we call the mountaintop and they forget where they come from. It's what it is. It's a nature, it's a part of life or whatever. Um, but there are some good people in this industry too that say, you know what, man, if there's anything you need, you know, call me anytime, you know, and they never got too big for us right. or they never made too much money for us. And at the same time, there's the reverse of that. Me and you have seen a lot of careers go all the way to the top and we've also seen them come all the way back down. Yes. And yeah. uh, I was telling somebody the other day, I won't mention any names, but, um, you know, I've seen some people that have some plaques on the wall and that did very well catching the bus. And this is the reality of this industry that we're in. Tomorrow's not promised. So you guys that are watching this, take your career very seriously. And if you want people like Wendy, like myself and others in the industry to take you seriously, you have to make sure you're presenting yourself in a serious manner. You have to be willing to go the distance. You have to be willing to sacrifice. And I think that's a key thing, Wendy, that I know we're we'll be talking about radio here. But I think a lot of these other things that are coming out is just as valuable because it's what leads to the radio airplay. It's what leads to keeping the airplay. It's about dedication, perseverance, consistency. And I think that's where a lot of artists and a lot of independent labels have gone wrong is they refuse to be consistent. They think, oh, man, if my record doesn't break in two weeks, I'm done. They don't understand that you have to what we call lay with the record. You have to be able to continue to keep building, keep talking about it, creating a story. It's more a book is more than just the first couple of pages or the first chapter. You have to keep building it. And the bigger the book, the more chapters it's going to consist of. So that's what a lot of what we're talking about here today with radio. If you want to be successful, especially in radio, is you have to look at the big picture. You have to be willing to sacrifice. You may have to do shows for stations. You may have to get out there. Hey, right now there's Hurricane Harvey going on. The aftermath is ridiculous. These radio stations are looking for relief. They're looking for help. Hey, get out there and pass out stuff. Help people and give back, but do it through the radio station. That's another way of building relationships. As radio begins to see that you're active in the community and that you're willing to help out and be a part of touching lives, 
maybe that programmer may not think very a little bit more of you and they may not hesitate to say you know what on that next really good song that you have saying you know what i've seen this kid all over the city you know i'm going to give it a shot and things so it's a lot of things can come out of sacrifice and putting others first so i want to put that out there as well thank you for mentioning that so you've been really generous with your time today i really appreciate you so much for this how can, no, how can folks get in touch with you well, we're always available, of course, through website, uh, RadioAirplayPros.com or Radio Airplay Professionals. RadioAirplayPros.com. Uh, check us out. We, we, you know, we've got all our radio campaigns on there. We've got client lists, testimonials, and so forth. You can get a lot more familiar with who we are, what we've done. Uh, for all we know, we may have, you, we may even work some of your your friends' uh, songs and stuff as well. And that's what we've also discovered is that a lot of people didn't know we were involved. Uh, and we find it that sometimes people, they just don't say, uh, I think one of my clients said it best when he gave me a thank you in, in his, in his, uh, linear notes in his CD. He said, you know, Mike Matthews, the best kept secret in the industry. And I'll never forget that, you know, because as much as you want to say, Hey, referrals are real is that we've also found that a lot of times when you're really effective, a lot of people tend to, you know, embrace you and keep you to yourself. So uh, that's that's what we did with Radio Airplay Pros is we said, you know what, we're about the little guy. We're about incubating. We're about starting the records. We've mastered that. That's what we do here. You know, we can get you noticed. We can get you started. We can get you off the ground. And, and hey, if your goal is just to get your career launched, that's what we do here all day long. At that point, if you want to take it on your own, if you want to go sign a major label deal, obviously they're going to come in with their team and so forth and take it to that next level. We can assure you we can get you that first benchmark. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. You've been awesome. Right, thanks for having me, Wendy. Absolutely. Love you. All right.